God, you're so beautiful. God, she's so beautiful, man. <laughs> Am I right or wrong? Look at her. The mid-2000s were a weird time in Vin Diesel's movie career. After his success with Pitch Black in 2000 and the first Fast and Furious movie, Vinny Boy became a more well-known name in the action genre. And instead of continuing with the Furiously Fast franchise, he opted to pursue things like Triple X and to experiment with comedies like The Pacifier. Babylon AD came out in 2008. What makes it so strange to me is that this is the last movie he did before making Fast and the Furious movies for 19 years. Holy shit. There are so many Fast and Furious movies, I don't think that's ever really sank in until just now. So I guess the real question is, is Babylon AD worth remembering or does it actually deserve to be forgotten? Only one way to find out. The movie opens with Vin Diesel walking through the rain in order to beat a guy up for a second so we can establish immediately that he's a tough guy. Vin Diesel is playing Turup, our main character who is a mercenary for hire. After this opening, Turup is sitting in his apartment when a bunch of guys blow open his wall while he's eating so one guy can make threats at him. Without hesitating, he shoots that guy in the face before agreeing to go with the rest of the soldiers. A guy named Gorski wants to hire him to take a refugee from Russia all the way to America, and he even gives Turup a liquid passport to get him in the country. It's never explained why Turup isn't allowed in America, just that he's a wanted terrorist, but unfortunately, we never learn what he did to be a wanted terrorist. Turup accepts the job, and later that night, he's taken in a car that's being carried by a helicopter via a magnet to start his job. The helicopter drops him off in Mongolia, where motherfucking Michelle Yeoh shows up as Sister Rebecca, who then gives Turup three rules. She says that she goes everywhere the girl goes, the girl can't be subjected to the outside world, and the third rule is no foul language. Turup, on the other hand, replies with the following. You listen to my one and only rule. Don't fuck with me. Sister Rebecca says that he is clearly not a gentleman before she storms off. Aurora is the girl he's transporting, and once she makes her very awkward introduction, the trio set out. They walk through a market while Turup casually just steals items from local vendors in order for them to blend in. The whole time they're at this train station, they're being watched by Aurora's dad, who I guess hacked into all the security cameras this place has. But like, I honestly kind of find it hard to believe that a place like this would even have security cameras. Of course, during all of this, Aurora wanders away from Turup so she can get a closer look at some kitty cats in cages. After that, she freaks out when she's surrounded by the crowd of people because she somehow knows that a bomb is about to go off. As she's saying a bomb is about to go off, a bomb does in fact go off. And through all the commotion from the explosion, they end up making their train, and on the ride, Aurora preaches God's will to Turup. Their first stop is a refugee camp that is also a nightclub slash fighting rink? They're there to find Turp's friend Finn, played by one of my favorite actors, Mark Strong. Finn helps them out by getting them passes on a boat and arranges for snowmobiles to be there waiting for them when they get to their destination. Some guys try to bribe Turp into walking away from his job without putting up a fight, but instead, we get a shaky cam parkour chase. I wish I could understand what was happening in this fight scene, but the camera movements are kind of making me motion sick here. During all the commotion, Aurora gets dragged into this weird guy's cage, which starts a fight between him and Macho Man Vin Diesel. And in case you didn't know, Vin Diesel actually has it in his contract that he can't lose a fight on screen, which makes that Fast Five fight between him and The Rock, who both have this clause in their contracts, even funnier. And then you add Jason Statham in the seventh Fast and the Furious movie, and they all have this clause in their contract, so none of them can lose. It's really boring, and in this movie, it's also really boring. He ends up killing the guy, which makes Aurora run away, and Turup catches up to shoot another guy before everyone is reunited. The next day, everyone sets out to get on the boat, but because they have to cross the ice and the ice is thinning, we get this wonderful moment from Mark Strong that just made me chuckle. This goddamn global warming is bad for business. The boat isn't actually a boat. Instead, it's a Russian submarine that comes up through the ice. I wonder if this is where Vin Diesel got the idea for the submarine bit in the eighth Fast and the Furious movie. 
Okay, so then Aurora gets angry because of all the people being left on the surface. So somehow she's able to operate this submarine without any prior knowledge to submarines. Like, I don't even think she has the hunt for Red October on her DVD shelf. It ends when Turret pulls a gun on her and then gets her to calm down and stop what she's doing. A little later on the sub, Sister Rebecca drops her backstory to Turup about how she's been with Aurora since the start. Finn deduces that she's carrying some kind of bioweapon and that she's probably worth a lot of money, and Turup says that if that's the case, he'll just kill her himself. Once they depart the sub, a snowmobile sequence kicks off as they race across the snow to get to the safe zone. Fighter drones show up, so naturally they use NOS that would of course be in these snowmobiles, because Vinny boy gotta have his NOS. Then Turup does a backflip off a jump to destroy one, and then rams his snowmobile into the other in this very triple X feeling sequence. Unfortunately, Turup gets a little injured in this stunt, so Finn pulls a 180 and pulls his gun on Sister Rebecca and Aurora while they're tending to his wounds. Doesn't really matter because Turup shoots him and Mark Strong sadly exits this movie. Later, they all joke and laugh in their shelter, and then Aurora randomly says that they're all going to die in New York, and then she just goes to bed. Our trio is now in Canada, and we get some shirtless Vin Diesel action, which I believe completes my Vin Diesel bingo card on things he does in every single movie. Oh, then this really weird sexual moment between Aurora and Turup happens, and boy is it weird to see Vin Diesel be romantic with anyone, really. Using the liquid passport, Turup and the gang board a flight and end up in the Big Apple. When they arrive at their hotel, Aurora sees that her home back in Mongolia has been completely destroyed by a rocket. A doctor shows up to get a reading on Aurora, and she casually tells him that he's a bad man, which leads to this out-of-pocket moment. I'm pregnant. Twins. What? What the fuck? Apparently it's a miraculous conception because not only has she never done the hanky panky with anyone, she's never had anyone touch her her entire life until she almost kissed the tree that is Vin Diesel. But of course, because he's in love with her now, instead of turning her over, we get a giant firefight. It kicks off when a guy shoots a rocket that's locked onto Turup, so he jumps through a van as it explodes. But since he drank the same elixir as everyone in Fast and the Furious, which makes him immortal, he completely survives this explosion and continues fighting. Unfortunately, Sister Rebecca did not drink that elixir and she gets shot and dies. Then Aurora shoots Turup and another missile explodes on top of him. He's brought to the same doctor as before, who just so happens to be Aurora's father and the guy that was watching them on the security cameras back at the train station. Also, Turup lost his leg, was clinically dead for two hours, and then went into a coma for five days, and they just casually dropped this information, then skirt around it really quick. The doctor tells us that he was trying to inject babies with artificial intelligence so they could process information like a computer. So dumb. So not only is Aurora pregnant, but she's also giving birth to twins, and they were also injected with artificial intelligence. The doctor then straps this cyborg looking device to Turup because he tells him that our brains remember and record more even after we die. And using this device, he can find out what happened right after Turup died. We see that Aurora stopped the missile and told him to go home, which points back to an earlier moment when Turup said he wanted to go to his family's farm in upstate New York. Then another bad lady known as the High Priestess, who's been in a couple of scenes, but not really doing anything, but she just shows up to kill the doctor and find Aurora for herself. Turup and a team get to Aurora in upstate New York just as the High Priestess and her bad guys show up, so we can get a decent car chase. There's a couple good moments with explosions and some fake outs with the driving, but honestly, it doesn't look like a lot of effort or money went into this moment. And the way it ends with Vin Diesel just looking out the back of this Hummer is very unsettling to me for some reason. After this, we cut to Aurora telling Turup that he's the father of the kids now as she's lying in a hospital bed. And the last scene of the movie is him holding hands with these two kids as he walks back to his newly rebuilt and very poorly CGI'd home in upstate New York, the end.
This whole plot feels like a walkthrough of an RPG game, but not nearly as fun. It feels like every other scene is them talking about nothing interesting or going from one place to another while nothing interesting happens. I think this leans into my other issue, which is this movie does not feel like the movie you think you are sitting down to watch. Here's the plot summary from where I rented to watch this movie. Veteran turned mercenary Turup takes the high risk job of escorting a woman from Russia to America. Little does he know that she is host to an organism that a cult wants to harvest in order to produce a genetically modified messiah. In no way is this the plot of the movie that I felt like I was watching. The only accurate things in the description of that plot is the fact that he's a mercenary and he's escorting a woman to America. And technically, they start in Mongolia, which isn't even Russia. I don't even think it's said that the goal was to make an artificial messiah. The doctor just says AI, and we don't even learn that until pretty much the very end. Fuck, we don't even find out she's pregnant until they're in New York City, which could have made the journey there a little more interesting. I'm pregnant. They start in a car, go to a train, then get on a plane, and during all of that, a bomb goes off and... Pretty much nothing else. Babylon AD actually sets the world up pretty well in the first 10 minutes before completely dropping the ball. Though I think it's a little silly, the opening where everyone is trying to sell Turup a gun, and it turns out he's there to beat a guy up for selling him a gun that doesn't work, is a cool little touch. Then we get to see the fact that he uses a bike lock to keep his apartment extra secure because clearly he's not in a good area, and then he has to skin and cook his meal from scratch, which are all great ways to set the scene. But then after this, the world goes back to feeling pretty much like our world, and I don't think it's meant to. We learn that tigers went extinct in 2017, and the ones in the cages we saw earlier at the train station are actually clones of clones. Okay, that's interesting. Babylon AD, would you like to tell us anything else about this cloning technology that exists in this world, or the fact that animals are extinct? No, not even a little? Still no? Okay, cool. All we get are small glimpses that just aren't enough to get a wider scope. Like how Turup is a terrorist, but a liquid passport means he's all good? Do we still not have facial recognition for this kind of thing in America? Or did airport security get less secure as the world got worse? Like if the doctor can look at the security cameras at the train station and use facial recognition to find you, how does the liquid passport suddenly not make you a terrorist with facial ID? I don't know how to explain it, but it just doesn't feel like the movie that you think you're gonna sit down and watch. Something about the whole thing feels off, like it's a TV show pilot, a fan fiction, and an escort mission movie all rolled into one? Much like the fifth Spy Kids movie, Babylon AD is just a whole lot of nothing and probably deserves to be forgotten. So for that reason, I'm putting another Vin Diesel movie into just plain garbage. Hey everyone, if you enjoyed this, don't forget to check out my video essay on the movies Spy Kids 1 through 5. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment down below what movie you'd like to see me cover in the future.